is my great pleasure to to uh, join this uh, this project with Dan uh, coordinates so uh, successfully, and I hope you will find uh, tonight uh, this evening lecture uh, educated and more full, uh, communicate well, and uh, because we are here for communication, environmental communication, and. Um, uh, let me say just that you also met Maya. Maya is our PhD student uh, to be the, the uh, PhD very soon, and uh, our uh, assistant at our ecology unit. So she will. She's already a great help with this. She's also administrative uh, stuff for our project, and uh, she also uh, is uh, <clears throat> our pillar. Uh, in uh, our ecology group at the department. I'm also visiting professor in Sarajevo, Faculty of Sciences for Climatology and uh, uh, Geographic Information Systems and Remote Sensing in Ecology and also in Eastern Sarajevo for Ecology. So let me share the presentation. Hope you can see it, Maya. Yes, yeah, yeah, we can see it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what we've been told, what the science says, what uh, our authorities at the Balkans do, what the authorities at the, in the region, wider region do, what the European Union do, what the United Nations do about global warming, about biodiversity, about uh, uh, na nature disasters. It is uh, overwhelming, you will agree all. I imagine you are not all ecologists, right? Uh, otherwise you wouldn't join this uh, webinar in the first place. Uh, but you want to know more and to clarify confusing information. You are bombed every day. Uh, in the media, in official uh, climatology uh, panels, uh, in actions in your country to combat climate changes and in effort to save the nature and to save our environment in the best way we can do. So, the prime thing we should do about that to, to for the any clarification, if, if there is any, and you will see very soon why, is to communicate. It is uh, what a uh, human being is blessed uh, with uh, capability to communicate. If we don't communicate, uh, we can do science for our own. Politicians and the authorities will try to do their best Let's 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 imagine that they are trying to do their best, but without communication, the society and the local community and local people will, on the other side, trying to do their best, and they can clash in doing best. Why? Because they don't communicate, or they communicate, which is even worse, in a wrong way. <clears throat> So, let's just put it, everything in the global frame. Our planet, the, the Earth, is known in the universe as a blue planet. Blue because of the consistence of water at the lithosphere. So, the lithosphere, or the surface of our planet, is actually uh, Seventy-five percent of surface is water, uh, oceans and seas. Only the rest is continental part where the humans live. Then, if we if we look at the whole lithosphere, you know the core of our planet, ninety-five percent ninety-five percent of volume 
is water. So our planet is aquatic planet. The majority of ecosystems at the planet, which we ignore very often, is actually marine and ocean and aquatic uh, water ecosystems. But our planet is also a thirsty planet. So how that can be? That it's very actually easy because uh, salinity of the marine ecosystems. It is not water which is which can be used for drink, which can be used for uh, physiology of uh, fresh water of of uh, terrestrial plants. So only three percent of global water is fresh water, continental water. And it is not the worst. The worst is that th those three percent are not evenly spreaded to the continents. Some parts of the continents, like our part, luckily, the Balkans uh, and the region, we have enough water still before we destroy that. But still, we have enough water. But there are parts of the continents without any water whatsoever. So in that way, our planet is also deserted and thirsty planet. Our planet is also frozen planet because uh, the huge parts of North and South Pole or Arctic and Antarctic are frozen. The big difference between Arctic Arctic meaning Arctic, Arcus is uh, a bear, you know that. So uh, North Pole is not a continent, it is a frozen ocean. That's why it melts quickly than South Planet. And it is much younger, it is, it is three billion years younger than Northern, than Southern Pole. Southern Pole, Antarct Antarctic is frozen continent. It is the biggest continent and it's frozen. We ignore it because we don't think about that because humans never, not even one human ever born on that. It's the only continent when humans don't live. But on the other hand, it is the biggest continent and the coldest and the harsh climate continent on the earth. So when we talk about, uh, water just think that there is water in these frozen parts it is just not in a, it is just in different uh different uh <clears throat> consistence <clears throat> so our planet apart from being blue aquatic deserted uh, th thirsty uh, and frozen, our planet is also the only warm and green planet. Why the, our planet is warm? Because we have a greenhouse in a, a shape of atmosphere, which keep it warm. Uh, why it is green? Because we have photosynthesis and the plants and vegetations, vegetation and thanks to these uh, warm conditions. And uh, that's why we have life and organic production in on our planet. So our planet is unique and uh, every part of the, our planet is unique and different from the other, but there are similarities in uh, many ways. If we want to put everything in time frame perspective. Our planet didn't look always, all, you know, it, it, our planet didn't look always like this. But you will be surprised, I won't uh, go with this video uh, for 11 minutes, uh, but you will get the whole presentation with those clips live in this presentation, so you can watch it later and you can uh, study it uh, uh, when, whenever you want, it will be uh, on online. 
but if you want to put that in the perspective of time, let's see how the Earth changed over time. So mind that uh, one unit time of this uh, in this video is one million year. Actually, someone said uh, that when about this video, which is the best, I think, uh, which you can find uh, on online and uh, in the scientific uh, community, is that every frame of this uh, video is one million year. It is, uh, uh, it is magnificent. So, <clears throat> let's see what happened long time ago. The Earth is uh, old about 4.5 billion of years. So, if you go back in that time, uh, you probably know from school and, and, and you learn that in your uh, faculty or your school or elementary school, how Earth, uh, 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 what, what, how, how was it in the beginning, which was a really very hot place and very, very uh, hostile uh, planet. But over time, uh, let's, let me show you just a hint, so, second. so you see uh, in this video, which is 11 minutes, you will see how millenniums goes, how temperature change and the composition of the atmosphere, the length of day, so uh, uh, Earth was uh, spinning much faster than now. So one day was uh, eight hours and nine hours. Uh, and depending on cooling and uh, processing of the surface uh, over millions and millions of years, atmospheric composition was cha were changed. Uh, first, there was no oxygen. It is our third atmosphere, which we know now with the oxygen thanks to uh, cyanobacteria uh, and later on of uh, photosynthesis of vegetation so it is very very close closely connect and you will see if you go three million then boring million and the length of day uh, mitochondrial symbiosis cold tectonic plates uh, moves all the time, right? And when you go just to the, to the end of uh, the length of day for we know now and, and ice age and everything, you see that uh, our era, you didn't see that because it is very hard to spot our era is a blink of eye in these 11 minutes. It is less than a second. You will catch it, try to catch it here. It is less than a second in this time frame. So keep always that in mind that uh, Heracles said, Pantare, everything changed, everything uh, is dynamic and especially our earth and it is our it is only our uh, duty to not to interfere in a way that uh, we do at the moment uh, also another video which we also want uh, go through the whole uh, video now but you can watch it later, is tectonic uh, plates moving. So you will see five, uh, 500 uh, years ago, or 500 million years ago, which is a modern era comparing to five, four billion years 
of uh, planet Earth history, you will see the continents had different and they move uh, and they continue to moving and they are moving now. But you will see the, the way they, the tectonic plates always move. Unfortunately, we witnesses on these days that it can have devastating uh, impact on human society. And my heart goes for Turkey, Lebanon and Syria uh, at that mo this moment. But let's back here for 40 million years ago. You see, uh, it is not recognizable. Continents are not recognizable as you, we know it now. Something, if we go 90 million years ago, you will see that it is a period which is better known for uh, our scientific community in reconstruction. And you will see how maybe, maybe better to go to... Uh, what is this? Sorry, I can't move this. Anyway, uh, 100 years ago, you, you can see that before that, it was Pangea, one big continent, Pangea, and it starts to move apart. And one, some 50, oh, sorry, some uh, 800, uh, uh, 80 years ago, 80, 80 millions ago, uh, it started to look like uh, what is it is now? You will see that Euro Asia and uh, North America were connected together the 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 longest period period of time. That's why uh, biodiversity between North America and Euro Asia is so similar uh, because they were stick uh, uh, together for longer time than other continents. And you can see. Uh, Indian uh, subcontinent. You 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 probably hear very often that we call India subcontinent, not continent, subcontinent. And why is that? Because India actually a subcontinent flew uh, from very fast. It is very very dynamic tectonic plate, and some. 50 years, 50 millions uh, years ago, it hit. Uh, Eurasian, Asian or continent and that is when Himalaya uh, a mountain were formed and some 10 millions, 20 million years ago we got the uh, the the uh, continent uh, shape what it is now but it's still moving it's still uh, still traveling and NASA scientists uh, said that in 25 in 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 some 250 million years in the future we will again have supercontinent like Pangea was and Pantalasa one super ocean like it was 250 million years ago the evolution of, that, of atmosphere uh, went also across through different uh, different um, structure. So I will let you to see this short video, just because we will talk about uh, climate uh, warming, uh, atmosphere, and climate changes, and it is really important for you to know uh, how uh, how the the atmosphere was uh, born. 4.5 billion. Uh, Maya, just tell me, do you hear the sound of the video? Yes, yeah, yeah, we can. Okay. Years ago, the hot globe was surrounded by a thick layer of its original atmosphere. 
consisting primarily of hydrogen and helium. It was still very, very hot. These light gases tended to float upwards and so gradually escaped into space. So now we have nothing. The cooling Earth was subject to violent volcanic eruptions, accompanied by the release of huge amounts of other gases, water vapor, carbon dioxide, ammonia, methane, and sulfur dioxide. At the prevailing high temperatures, ammonia and methane reacted with trace amounts of oxygen, resulting in the formation of a secondary atmosphere, composed chiefly of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. But. About 3.8 billion years ago, when the Earth's surface cooled down below 100 degrees Celsius, the water vapor condensed to form seas and oceans. This is the crucial moment. Nearly 3 billion years ago, the first primitive life forms developed in the waters. And it changed the game. Algae and bacteria. Bacteria, yeah. The former began to utilize solar energy to produce nutrients by the process of photosynthesis. As a result, the oxygen content of the atmosphere started to increase. Ultraviolet radiation was harmful to the new living organisms, but it promoted the conversion of some of the oxygen into ozone. Ozone. Because of this, an ozone layer gradually developed around the Earth, filtering out harmful ultraviolet radiation before it reached the Earth's surface. This made it possible for land plants to appear on the Earth, causing, in turn, a considerable increase in the oxygen content of the atmosphere. At the same time, the proportion of carbon dioxide began to fall because the gas was absorbed by the plants. This plant activity led to the formation of the present atmosphere about 200 million years ago. So plants it has were not changed crucial. much in all the time since. Today, four-fifths of the atmosphere is nitrogen, one-fifth is oxygen, and the remaining fraction consists of other gases, such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Four point... Okay, so while these continents drifting and and moving, and slowly through the through the millions and millions and billions of years, and while our atmosphere change and the change and the game change with with uh, first uh, cyanobacteria and photosynthesis and life on this planet. So our vegetation and not only terrestrial vegetation, also the vegetation in uh, oceans and seas change the atmosphere and make it uh, what it is known as now. So why is why is that why was that possible? I mean, why that didn't happen on some other planet? Because we have the crucial the crucial uh, circumstance, and that is the planet was warm and stable uh, temperature enough for uh, living creatures, especially and the terrestrial ecosystems. So what is the main source of heat on this planet in solar system? It is obviously the sun. How sun heat our planet and why our planet is why will is not heated yeah we will get back to this uh short video if we have time why it is not heated evenly because it is not uh the sun is uh far enough to to uh, in theory evenly uh heat our planet well because our planet is one uh ellipsoid and it rotates in a way that the significant amount of direct uh, insulation come to the one part and uh, some parts uh, stays without it. So the sun is not pay the bills, not for everyone in the same, um, the, whole, the, the, the whole planet at the same time. So it is obvious why uh, some parts of the planets are warmer some are cooler. So, <clears throat> so, 
scientific scientists and climatologists and uh, geographists noticed that the Earth atmosphere is warming in last uh, period of decades or or one hundred or two hundred years. Uh, it is not. It wouldn't be significant if we think about the longer time frame because instrumental climatology and that is pe period in climate climatology as a science from where we have. Uh, instrumental data. Everything else is reconstruction. So only 200 years in, in civilization we have instrumental climatology in a way that the whole planet uh, is covered by, by uh, sci scientist data. It is, it is extremely short time. Extremely. Extremely. Then uh, scientists did reconstruction from the ice, and you know the whole story on Vostok ice cores, which uh, in reconstruction of uh, ice and uh, carbon dioxide and uh, structure of uh, ice, they reconstructed the temperature and the uh, carbon dioxide, dioxide in a no longer uh, time frame, it is uh, 50, uh, hundred uh, years, uh, 50,000 years ago. But when you think about, again, about those millions and billions of years ago, uh, it is still very, in geological way, it is, it is a short time, it is a blink of eye. But we don't have anything else. We need to deal with the things, with the data we have. So this uh, uh, investigation in Vostok Ice Cores uh, bring up uh, a new discovery of uh, a new uh, hypothesis, hypothesis in climatology, and that is that carbon dioxide in some way uh, make our atmosphere warmer. So the debate about these data are still going on and our, our uh, to, tonight we won't go into that. It is scientific debate for climatologists. Uh, one of those uh, say it is it's the carbon dioxide actually is not uh, the cause of temperature, that it is a rather uh, uh, the temperature goes up and then carbon dioxide is released from uh, oceans because when, uh, when uh, oceans are cool, they absorb carbon dioxide. When it is warm, they release uh, carbon dioxide. So it can be in one way or another. So while those heating, heated debate uh, between scientists goes on, governments don't waste time and they made, and you know well about it, that, it, uh, they made a United Nations uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, so-called IPCC, and they uh, try to make some rules and some uh, to, to decrease the impact of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere made by man. Uh, we can't affect uh, volcanic uh, eruptions because mo mainly carbon dioxide, you saw that in this clip, that many carbon dioxide come from volcans and we can't affect that. But if men do anything, uh, wrong in that way, let's not do it. Of course, when you have governmental and intergovernmental bodies, that means that politicians uh, get into the story. It is not this in international uh, intergovernmental panel uh, for climate change, uh, 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 the name say says for itself, intergovernmental. So it is 
uh, legal political body. And you know well that uh, whether we like it or not, uh, politicians always make try to make the best from themselves of every story in every part of this earth, not only in this part of the world, in every part of the world. So you have a lot of uh, confusing uh, uh, information about uh, this uh, topic. One come from uh, inter IPCC and the other from a different part of uh, academic and scientific society. But part of the academic and scientific society is also included in uh, IPCC. So what we can do, we uh, we can't debate from now long uh, all the time who is right. Uh, the time will tell. Meanwhile, the less damage we do, the better. So let's uh, let's uh, think about the worst scenario, and let's let's do and act as the worst scenario is uh, our option. The worst scenario is that IPCC in 2018, it was pre-COVID time, and um, they, they reported one rather uh, disturbing and uh, worried, worrying uh, uh, report and uh, said that uh, 2020s could be one of the human humanity's last, very last chances to avert devastating impact of our environment and our Earth. So let's stick with that. So if if we didn't do such damage, even better, we will do less. But let's let's stick with the worst scenario. And as ecologists and, and scientists do what we can do to uh, decrease the anthropogenic impact, not only in CO2, but the other uh, impact on our environment. So when we talk about carbon dioxide and methane and water vapor, um, you know, it is greenhouse gases. And here we come with one very, very, very specific point. Uh, I can bet that at least half of you, if I, if I um, uh, ask you now, what is your first, uh, your first association with the word uh, uh, greenhouse gases? Oh, it is our, it, it, it's horrible. It's horrible. We don't want greenhouse gases. We want to decrease the greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are our enemies. And that is because the communication <coughs> in, sorry, in environmental community is wrong. Uh, that is why you think that uh, greenhouse gases are, is our, our enemies and the carbon dioxide is our um, the worst thing on planet. It just ain't so. Uh, but let's see how, why our planet is warm. Why we don't freeze now in minus 40 degree. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have this conversation if we don't have greenhouse gases. We wouldn't exist. So carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor are uh, the main greenhouse gases that are found in our atmosphere. So when energy travels from the sun, it comes to the surface of the earth in a short wave radiation. <clears throat> if we don't have, if we have solar atmosphere without really atmosphere, solar radiation, these, this type of radiation would be released uh, from the surface in a long wave radiation and go through the space. The greenhouse molecules actually absorb this heat and keep it in our troposphere through the very 
telling some 10 kilometers uh, in the high. <clears throat> so this process and these gases keeps the earth warm and make a such ancestral uh, place for life. That's why our planet is unique, because we have greenhouse gases. So what is the climate change then? So why, why we are told we, we don't want that? We, we don't want this CO2. Just imagine if you don't have CO2, photosynthesis would, would the, the earth will be, everything will be dead in one year if we suddenly lose all CO2 because the plants wouldn't be able to take it and make oxygen and water and organic, uh, prime organic substances. So the life will be gone in one year in the, if, in, in, if the CO2 decrease below 225 ppms, which won't very soon, but it, we are going to the, 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 another problem in if we're going up. But it must not go down, that's the point. We, we can't remove it, luckily. I can imagine that there are people so, so fundamental in this, uh, and so radical in without scientific background, they, if they can, they will, they will remove the whole CO2 from the atmosphere. We can't do that. It must and Allah, God, thank God, we can't, we are not able to do that because it's not up to us. So, <clears throat> what is climate change? We said, we have a global warming because, and let's stick with the worst scenario, the CO2 is to blame for global warming and the main CO2 in an atmosphere, the decreasing of CO2 is up to human. Okay, let's, let's go with that agenda. So what is climate change? If we say global warming, what that? I would like to, I would love if I had the opportunity to talk with you so you can interact now but uh, uh anyway uh it is the model we because there are a lot of you probably it wouldn't be the best idea <clears throat> so i can only imagine what you know what you don't know about climate climate change so what is the biggest problem is in climate change it's a, we've been told that climate change is a change in the average temperature, a cycle of, of weather over a long period of time. So when you say weather, weather is a, a state of meteor meteorological elements at this very moment. That is the weather. Uh, climate and climate uh, is a, a long-term weather ever. Values. So, okay. We have, if we say long term, what does it mean? 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, billion years, million years, 20 million years, 220 million years. The scientists agreed that five, 50 years is uh, a model for define the climate and climate changes. Okay. We have another obstacle now in 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 the retrospective of uh, climate change uh, in uh, how the average temperature temperature arrays. What is the average temperature? Where is that average temperature? Average temperature of the whole Earth it doesn't exist because some parts of the Earth are very hot, some are very cold, some are moderate and temperate. So what is the average, what does it mean? It, it is like we sit in one room and I have tem body temperature 40 and dying, and you are all good, 30, 30 of you with 36,5, okay. So our average temperature will be below 37 and no one will be in danger, right? 
according to statistic in this room. And no one is sick because our average temperature is good. Let alone I'm dying here on 40, de 40 degree burning my brain. So average temperature is very misleading information. You will see very often in communication, in the media, our average temperature. Well, okay, but what does it mean? How does that affect the specific parts of the world? And there is uh, the, the, the story behind and the real impact. What is the worst in this increasing temperature? It is not the average value. It is the value in the hottest and the coolest places on the earth. They are most uh, impacted in with this. That is the worst. If we had average temperature, everybody, you know, the whole earth, uh, 0 0.5, we wouldn't really pay attention. We wouldn't notice. Only scientists will do something with that. But who cares? 0 0.5, well, Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. And you will hear very often uh, a climate criticism, climate change criticism, so-called skeptics, that they say, well, wait a minute. You say that climate change, when uh, the winter is too cold, you say, oh, well, that is because of climate change. Then if it is the summer too hot, also it's climate change. When you have drought, and deserted areas uh, in a sub subtropical uh, climate. That is because climate changes. But then you, you have a more ice on Antarctic and less on Arctic. It is also the answer. It is. It starts to be a universal answer, but it shouldn't be. It must be explained to people. It must communicate well. The problem is in climate change is that it hits the most vulnerable ecosystems. It is not the average temperature. It is not even the, the uh, melting the ice because it melting ice on North Pole happened all, just look at that uh, video uh, clip I show you. It is frozen ocean. It is water. It is not a continent. North Pole is not continent, it is a frozen ocean. So seasonally, uh, during a uh, million of years, it changed uh, and, and melted and changed the shape. It is only that we don't, no one was uh, there to make evidence of that. But in reconstruction, we know that. So the most vulnerable ecosystems actually are fresh waters in terrestrial ecosystem in our continents. So that is where communication fail in talking about everything else and, and taking the, the whole agenda in the same way for the same, for the different uh, parts of, of the planet, which is not the which is not the correct approach because you, are, you can't, some parts are hit with the global changes, some are not. And you can't do it in the same way as every place. So we talk about climate change and the human, the planet gets warmer, the climate is changing, climate, we're always changing. But the point is, what humans did in the last instrumental part of climatology in the last 200 years, but which we have evidence to make it unnatural way, to make, to add an unnatural uh, decrease of. Uh... Then <clears throat> again, communication. Why is climate change a problem? So you will always get the answer. It is because uh, some uh, species uh, will not have time to uh, adapt and they will be extincted. Some pieces will change their uh, 
uh, they will spread because they have more competitive uh, capabilities, adapt adaptation for new space, but that is evolution. It, it happened all the time. The species who were not able to adapt for, for any sort of uh, negative environmental events, and it happened even in nature, in natural ways, uh, they, they didn't survive. But the real communication is what people do, what humans do, to impact that. Not through CO2, but through internet, for example. You might, well, heard about invasive species. Invasive species are species which are not common for some parts of the, uh, for example, for the Balkans. And we notice that Rhinotria japonica, for example, uh, one uh, small tree which goes through the near the rivers, spreading from Asia to Europe. And we call it invasive because it uh, makes uh, our autochthone species disappear. It is more robust in ecological way, more aggressive in spreading, and we call it invasive species. So, and we blame climate change for that. Okay, yes, it is true. But then we completely forget how many, and it is very hard way to, to change that because we need to put a lot of effort and we should do that. But we completely ignore other ways we do uh, in spreading about invasive species. And recently one paper is released that proved that the unbelievably that the most common way for modern uh, biodiversity to spread uh, Alochton species through the world is internet and Amazon.com. People just purchase on Amazon some species from China and put it in their garden and it get wild and go to the wood and, and through the whole world for aquarium, for pets, for whatever. Internet, just imagine. Not ships like in the past, uh, ships were the main vector to to accidentally move some species from North America to England, for example, some uh, macroinvertebrates hidden in ballast water in, in, a, in a ship, in a big uh, ship, but not the internet. Now you can buy plant on Amazon Common and you will get it. It is not legal, but no one stopped that yet. So, <clears throat> The climate change is a problem in uh, biodiversity spreading other species for and distinction of some species, but the human factor is worse. When we talked about uh, Antarctic and Arctic, there is one interesting de info, uh, data about uh, penguins on, on Antarctic, their population increase and increase over the last hundred years. They are not in distinction. They are not hit by climate warming. Why? Because they don't have natural enemy and that is man, human, <laughs> lives there. So there is no one to kill them, to hunt them. So we must deal with climate change and never forget that is the, the worst in communication, uh, environmental communication fail when you stick with one cause and you just do that and you don't have, you don't take in consideration others, other, other, uh, problems in, in, in spreading or distinct, distincting 
uh, species. So it is not all about climate change. It is climate change, but it is not all. And we can't we can't deal only with the problem we can hardly uh, change, not very soon, but we can deal what we can. And we don't do that because we are all focused on only on climate change. So that is miscommunication. Everything had to be uh, communicated and between local uh, academic uh, and politician, local society, that is citizen science, very important, uh, to connect all society levels uh, to combat environmental uh, issues and climate change together and uh, in, in a big picture, not focusing in only on one. In science, it is very wrong. If you go with only one reason, you will, you will do wrong. If you don't take in account all other factors, you will fail. That that's the rule in science. That is not science. That is just agenda. So <clears throat> we already said what what is uh, the main problems about uh, climate change in total. You know, the raising the uh, level. Of sea level uh, which can impact but mostly honestly human population not anybody else and it is not that critical at the moment <clears throat> ice melt is critical and thermal exp expansion is critical uh, thermal expansion especially because it hits the most vulnerable places in ecosystems, and that is freshwater ecosystem. We already have only 3% on this aquatic planet and blue planet. We have 3% of, of fresh water. And it is the most fragile ecosystems, and it is the most they pay the bills for the global warming. And that is where our attention should be focused. So, <clears throat> I already men mentioned this uh, North Pole and uh, obviously <clears throat> the orange line here in the picture marks the average minimum sea area and ice coverage in the last uh, 20, 200 years in instrumental climatic uh, period. Uh, and what happens? <clears throat> the bright surface of the ice reflects 80% of sunlight back to the space. So that's, that insulation is lost. <clears throat> that's why <clears throat> it is so cold and uh, uh, it keeps polar regions cool and moderate global climate. But the same happens with deforestation. The albedo effect is the same, almost the same as the polar. So we talk about ice melt, ice melt, North Pole, North Bear, North Fox. And we don't talk about deforestation in order to make agricultural area. The impact is the same. It is, and it is obviously, without any doubt whatsoever, human impact on climate, and that is deforestation. It is impact on ecosystem, but it is impact on atmosphere and the temperature of the earth directly by humans, evidently. And no one talk about that. I mean, they talk, but it is not a big deal because we need that to produce food. That is not excuse. Then we say we can say well we need coal to heat our rooms, and then where we will go with that, with that uh, narrative. So deforestation. Don't forget ever deforestation. When we talk about North Pole or North Pole melting, South Pole melt on their western coast, but the East Coast and and 
the especially the East Coast and the other parts are actually spreading. So the North Pole is actually bigger than it was, despite of the global warming. So obviously, global warming hits the more, most vulnerable places. Antarctic is a harsh place with a minus 90. It is two million years older than North Pole, than Arctic. Arctic is vulnerable because it is not a continent, it is just uh, water, frozen water. So that's why we need to always to think, not in average and not for all, just to see the places and the ecosystems which are hit the most. And always those, uh, whenever happens, when any catastrophe happens, always the most vulnerable pay price. So, more or less, we are still frozen planet, somewhere more, and some on North Pole less. So, <clears throat> when we talk about communi environmental communication, and when you go on Google, and Google greenhouse gases, three words, greenhouse gases, you don't know anything, you, you read, uh, newspapers and media, we will listen to politicians, uh, panels in Scotland with our, all the presidents there, talk, no one is climatologist. There was n literally no one climatologist in the climatologist conference in, in Glasgow last year, only politicians. So naturally you want to know something you don't have to be You have Google, you don't have to be expert in that. So you Google uh, greenhouse gases and you will get carbon dioxide, methane, holocarbons, ozone and nitrogen oxides. Okay, but someone is missing. Where is water vapor? Because water vapor is is the most important and the most biggest greenhouse gas. So what you don't know when you type this is that those gases in our greenhouse gases without water vapor, dry, completely dry air, which is almost never exist in, in the planet. You always have some even high clouds if, if not if not uh, low clouds and water on the ground. So then you try again. Wait a second, we learn in school that water vapor is the main uh, reason our planet is warm. Not the carbon dioxide. No one mentioned carbon dioxide in the school. No one mentioned methane. It, is, it was just some, some other apart from nitrogen, some other gases. We've been told that water vapor keep our planet warm. And it, that it is the main greenhouse gas. Then you Google greenhouse gases, water vapor. And voila, here we go. You get what you looking for and you see what is the percentage of water vapor in greenhouse gases and what is CO2, methane and others. So when you google greenhouse gases water vapor you get the right results which means that you should have known that before you google it. And how greenhouse gases and how, how water vapor keep our temperature, our, our planet warm? Because it prevents, it, it takes, and it allow, uh, it, the, the high clouds allows uh, radiation, but they don't allow to get it lost in the space. 
while low clouds they're they're struggling with they don't allow much of of uh, radiation but also they reflect a lot of so the high clouds and water vapor in a high troposphere are crucial to keep our planet warm so that means that you should have known that in the first place before you google it so well yeah science is right you should know the basic scientific fact if you want to trust google i am not saying that you don't google give you the right answer when you write uh the right question and your question needed to point water vapor why because no one not no one mention it anymore and google just give you the most most uh, uh the most popular uh images so if it is most popular google doesn't know whether it's true or not you should know better so you can't rely on internet uh, to gain scientific information you need to gain to, to know basic science environmental science to use internet as a help not vice versa so while fighting sufficient co2 the point is don't forget the basic science we love greenhouse gases, don't forget that, as they keep our planet warm and green. Without them, at the moment, we don't, wouldn't have this atmosphere. Without greenhouse gases, the atmosphere, uh, the, the temperature on this earth will be in average, in average, 40 Celsius minus, some say 38, some 40, celsius minus as comparing the temperature now so in other words as i said we wouldn't have this conversation because we wouldn't exist so while this i won't really want to go to this debate because some uh, scientists you will have all this in my presentation and some links and you can you can use that links and and see some speeches and debate about whether solar radiation solar activity impact this is nasa's uh uh finding and uh for but only for a short period of time they they claim that solar activity is, is not due to the the uh, temperature raising they don't say that it's co2 but they say that it is not solar activity so there is a lot of debate at the moment so while heated climate debit debate is on and you have one really interesting speech here uh, <clears throat> we need that sustainable development we need lower co2 emission we need green energy and we need green deal when i say deal you need two for a deal you need to communicate so above all we need the proper environmental communication Sustainable development means that you take in account all these problems, human impacts, human uh, 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 development society. You all want to have mobile telephones, uh, hybrid cars, uh, central heating, uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, we all want that food and uh, water and clean water at the same time we want to have clean uh, nature uh, clean uh, uh, environment in our anthropogenic ecosystems in our urban ecosystems so we have to find a real measure how to do that and the united nation gave and the european union gave uh, some main frame to, to set our minds it is not a directive it is just a mindset for uh, human uh, society to try to uh, do their activities within this frame 
to do the development within this frame. So we will just go quickly. You probably know about sustainable development goals and those goals are not something, uh, this is not rocket science. We don't want to have poverty. We want zero hunger. We want good, good health and well-being. We want to ensure quality education for everybody. We want gender equality. We want clean water and sanitation. We want clean energy. So, well, you probably noticed so far, it is only, we are only on number seven and we already have conflicts of many things because we want zero poverty and hunger. At the same time, we don't want to, uh, we want clean uh, water. It just don't go together, unfortunately. But as long as we have that set mindset, that frame, we do whatever we can to, to reach these uh, goals. So decent work, economic growth, industry, innovation, infrastructure, and clean, everything keeping clean, reduced inequalities, in, it, it means by inequalities in the country development, not, not inequalities in a society, but between countries, which is quite a task. Uh, sustainable cities and communities, which goes with uh, innovative materials development, which goes with super lab equipment. Again, how to do all of that in a natural way. Uh, responsible consumption and production, that, that is very feasible and that is the easiest task and people just don't do that. That's amazing. Uh, the most easiest task, it is actually the most, uh, the most uh, the less, uh, the most ignored by the, by almost every society. Uh, climate action, life below water action, life below water, especially oceans and uh, it is amazing. It is just amazing to think that uh, for example, the biggest creature ever lived in this earth, including dinosaurs, is actually a blue whale. And we still don't know how it, uh, where and how he, his life cycle, where the white uh, blue whale goes to reproduce, how they reproduce, we don't know that. David Attenborough, you probably know him. Uh, David Attenborough make uh, one one serial in Earth, uh, Blue Earth, Blue Planet, Earth, uh, Deep Planet. Uh, in one one episode, they went to the uh, depth of the ocean, which and he said we are more people were in space. We are the first humans on this, this deep and we, they couldn't go deeper because their submarine would that's integrated from the pressure of the ocean. 90% of life below water and species below water is not known to science. Can you believe that? Only 10% are known for science, 90% is unknown. And yet we have space programs trying to find life in some other galaxy. While we didn't learn about life in our planet. It is amazing. Uh, humans are, are really, really odd species. Life on land, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of land, and especially the water on the land. 
peace, justice, and strong institutions. Of course, it goes together with everything else. And partnership for the goals. For partnership, we need, again, to communicate. Some of these goals are directly, directly uh, state for our planet. Although we can put more than three in this direct. And one of these in, uh, is what I said and what is your debate. Uh, subject for today is water and fresh water, terrestrial water and aquatic terrestrial ecosystems, preserving, conserving, protecting and fight for them because water is not only the most basic of needs, but also the center of sustainable development, especially the freshwater ecosystems. Around 1 billion people uh, still have no access to, still, to drinking water. And some data said it is not one, one, uh, uh, 1 billion direct access. It is 14, 40 million people at the moment does not have any access to drinking water. Not clean, not any other. They depends on what someone will bring to them. 40 million of people at the moment on this planet. Uh, we don't talk about sanitation at all. At the same time, we have 2 billion people lack access to electricity, which is also very, very important, but not that much. You can live without electricity. You can't live more than three days without water. Fresh water, clean water, drinking water. So sustainability must bring three elements into the harmony, economy, society, environment. This leads us in the next 10 minutes to your debate. So get prepared for debate, I will just show you something, some case which can help uh, for your uh, debate fight uh, or not help, I don't know, but uh, it is about sustainability in uh, climate change. Uh, so you need, we need to think from present to have vision where to go and to do that. We have to make uh, steps and creative solutions from getting from point A to point B, C, D, and such. And it's called ABCD methodology. Very, it looks very simple. But when we think about European, this is from last year, uh, July. Uh, 20, 2022 and forecast for 2023 and you can see that uh, a deficit and uh, surplus of fresh water hits the Europe as never before and it is not only because of global warming it's, it has to do with something else it has to do to using water for wrong purposes. Clean water, which is fragile ecosystem in mountains to do to make the electricity power. That was wrong. That was wrong from the very beginning. And that is now the price. So we need to back a little bit in uh, back in time and we can use this images to get back in 1985, somewhere in Scotland and England. Uh, you know, in the UK, communities are very connected and people very uh, much take care about their uh, environment. And in one of those villages, one community got together and said, well, we don't need this man there in, uh, 90, in 85. We don't really need this man there. Let's 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 make a land uh, for agriculture of that, and let let's put earth and close this man there. So they did it, and 
well, not this kind, not this group of people, this group of people, they did it, but they finished at the court because Scottish natural heritage sued them because they changed the river, uh, riverbed, natural riverbed, uh, shape. So they sue them and they go to the court. At the court, Scottish Natural Heritage, this is not orig original, this is just some uh, artificial intelligence picture. Uh, they went to the court and they uh, uh, called court witnesses, scientists, uh, hydro hydrologists, and they said uh, villager villagers uh, called their expert and the prosecution and Scottish Natural Heritage called there. And one of their experts at the time was uh, one of our dear colleagues from Scottish Natural Heritage. And they give different stories. They said, one said, well, uh, villagers didn't do any wrong. That man there actually uh, may, was made by men. And they just put the river back to the, where they belong. And the Scottish National Heritage uh, expert said, no, that's wrong. So the judge didn't know who to believe. I mean, you have two scientists. One said one word, and it is my word against yours. I said they did better for the environment, and the other said that they ruined the river. But so <clears throat> they didn't, they couldn't make decision. And then the government said, well, we need scientists to give us some environmental tool for these kind of cases, which everybody will understand. When judge will jury will understand, the judge will understand, the lawyers will understand. We need some metric system which will say this is uh, conservation value of this river, uh, impact and or not. We, we can't be biologists and we, even we are not judges who is better sci scientists. So Scottish Natural Heritage did it and they develop over years and of scientific papers first, they develop one uh, method called SARCON, System for Revelation River for Conservation. And if we back in time, a lot of time after that, in 2015, we made a software at the University of Novi with cooperation with Scottish National Heritage. And we have that software, not knowing, we didn't know at the time that we will use it at the court actually in Serbia, and we did. So when we go to the back to the time and somewhere, not in Scotland, but in England, 20 years after that, uh, we are going to green energy, to COVID green energy, to combat climate changes in the very blue heart of Europe. And our solution was to put this into this. Is it green? Really? <laughs> so it happened like a flame over the Balkans in Albania with a lovely, and Professor probably uh, talked a lot about River Vyasa, the last wild river in Europe. We must protect it not only Albania, all of us must protect Vyasa. Vyasa is a, a germ. It's priceless. So in Albania, in Montenegro, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in Serbia, in very blue heart of Europe, why blue heart of Europe? What is called, why it is called the, this part of Earth like that? Because we have uh, those fresh water, we are not in shortage, we have a lot of fresh water, it is still clean and relatively clean, but it is not devastated and, and we, 
that's why they call us the blue heart of Europe. And then people reacted on this green solution of mini hydro plants. First in Bosnia, then in Montenegro, this is Serbia actually, no, no, this one, uh, this, this group of people. And uh, it ends in the way it's very barbaric. This is very barbaric. I mean, this is barbaric and this is barbaric answer. You put, you put legitimately those destroy the river and those people are taking back, taking out. So they did it. And meanwhile, we get another green project, Rio Tinto. What? So for Rio Tinto, we are preparing a learning game and you will get, Diane will uh, uh, release that when we are finished. So we won't talk about Rio Tinto now. But it finished with biggest process, protest ever in Serbia. Uh, this is Belgrade, ecological protest. Even though those people still didn't know they want green energy, they all want green energy, they all want to save the planet, they all want to combat climate change, but they don't want to destroy the rivers. So they didn't know what else to do and this is not how we communicate. This is not environmental. We are, we were forced for this. This is not communication. And then when we talk about real lithium, to wait a second, why do we need lithium so badly? Oh yes, because we need batteries to, to keep the energy from the alternative. What? Okay. Not in this way, obviously. And while all that happened, we have a court case, uh, people versus mini hydro plant investors in one, I don't want to say which, which was that, uh, because we are court witnesses there. So it is not important where, uh, but the pictures are real. So we were court, court witnesses team and went to the field take the method of, because we didn't have any data from before scientific, so we use uh, before and after control impact methods, uh, which is used in, in uh, Europe or um, places where you don't have previous data. Then we went to the field, reconstructed, used the, uh, uh, make the points where we can we'll get our samples. Then use our take out, this is Maya. Uh, we took our samples, put everything that in the Sercon software. And got a hit the result. We got the score before and after input before mini hydro plant, the river before, and the place where it is constructed and after down the river, the next site, we got very clear numbers, which could have been presented and were presented at the court. So all these pictures, all devastation, which is obvious, but it needs to be scientifically put in the scoring system and to get the score. And then you say to the court, well, this is, this is the score before, this is the score after, this is significant river modification impact, and it, they did it. Sercon score for conservation, which includes uh, our biodiversity data, not only hydromorphology, it's a river habitat uh, survey, just uh, all habitat data. Also, yeah, judge for listening, he understood it. And 
yeah, science. So <clears throat> uh, we won't go further. I think we, we will have enough time to go for your debate. I'm sorry. Maya is two. Maya. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, do we then? Uh, is are you here? Uh huh. I meant to ask: Do we have all credentials for all the people who are going to debate? Here we have Jovana. Yes, uh, I can turn my mic on and camera, so. Great. I'm, I'm good. Lovely to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt really lonely, <laughs> this muted community without cameras. Oh, lovely to see you. Is this is a beauty contest or what? I didn't know. <laughs> so we can do the. The pageant contest as well. <laughs> Hi. So we have four of us. Where is our hero surgeon? He was the most brave ones last time. Now I can't see him. Yeah, he's here. I can see him. I can't see him. Why why I can't see him? I'm here. Oh why I can't see you. Wait a second. Um Okay, my you can. Okay. Uh, could you unshare your screen so I could share my presentation? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I will share my screen only to show the presentation that you have partially seen already. Uh, can you see the screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, as all of you could see in the debate evaluation form, uh, we had uh, three phases of the debate. We have opening statements, we yeah. have rebuttals, and then in the end we have closing statements. During the rebuttals, we will have a cross-examination and uh, each section is actually time constrained. <clears throat> we have our pro and contra team. I saw everybody, but I didn't see Natasha. Uh, can, uh, could someone confirm that she's here? She's here. I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. I couldn't see you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I still can't see Surjan. Here. Yes, I, I could see him, but I couldn't see Natasha, but now I see that everybody is here. So we have our pro team, which are Zorica, Jovana and Nina, and our contra team, Sergian, Natasha and Dovrila. The team is uh, the hydropower plants, not only uh, divergent hydropower plants that are mostly talked about in our Western Balkan region because they are most common, but we have the general general idea of mini hydropower plants and their efficiency in producing electricity, uh, electric energy, I'm sorry, and the negative or positive effects that it has on the habitats and nature surrounding the plants. So, uh, I don't know if uh, professor maybe want to say something be before we begin or anyone from each team would like any clarification. Uh, I assume that we will have a uh, first pro opening statement, which will last maximally for five minutes. You don't have to fill all five minutes, but you have the five minute space. Then the contra team will have their opening statements. 
then the protein will have their butyl and they will have uh, space for up uh, for about three minutes to examine the contra team actually in their rebuttal time they could say some contra arguments and then ask the questions with which will be answered in these three minutes the same will happen with the contra rebuttal so you have actually four minutes to say some argument that you want and to ask the question for the uh, opposite opposing team so they will have three minutes to answer your questions after we finish this phase we will have closing statement and uh, for each team we have three minutes uh, i will change the slides and i will put the countdown timer so you will uh, have the idea how many minutes or seconds you have left so uh, and in the end we will have discussion and the voting and after that you will have uh, three days to write your evaluation and submit your assignments uh, do anyone want to comment something ask something or something like that yeah, I just so, talk. yeah. okay yes uh, first are we going to have the timekeeper? Do do you cut our words if we go beyond, or it's okay? Left I to our I will concept? show you. I will show you the next slide. So this is. Can you see the slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So this is the slide for the pro opening statement, and then I will start the time as you can see, and it will come down. In the end, it will ring, and it means that you need to finish your sentence and put the dot in your presentation. And then I will change the slide, uh, just a moment. Then I will change the slide and then start the contra opening statement. So hey. I will I will follow the whole debate. It wouldn't be so computerized, but we should keep the time frame so we can get any form at all. And one more, please, I'll be short. Okay. Do we also participants in this debate uh, prepare any evaluation and for whom, if yes? Yeah, uh, I, as I understood, you also prepare the evaluation and you in that evaluation, you can be honest and said in your opinion, whether your team was better or the opposing team was better. You can, uh, you know, pick some best lines from their side, some best lines from your side, and explain why is that so. So you are doing evaluation like any other uh, participant. OK, thanks. So we made we a mistake. Yeah, yeah we, we understand that you cannot be uh, as objective as the, the rest of the group, but we will, Professor, will surely have that in mind, you know, because, well, you are the part of the debate. Thank you. You have do. You have all right to do what you think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's start. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I would like now. I would now. I would like to call the first speaker for the pro team uh, to turn on their mic and to open this debate. Uh, yes, it's actually me. I'm I'm wondering, can I share my screen because I have a presentation just for easier follow up. Now I'm confused because of this timeline. Oh, OK, uh, I can unshare my screen, of course, but I will leave the timer on and then I will uh, mind you when the last minute is taking. Sure. It's a, is that OK? Yes, yes, that's, I mean, okay. I understood that it, it will be okay to prepare a presentation. Okay, okay. It's not oh. a problem. I will, okay. I will mind at the time. Just give me the minute to stop presenting. Yes, I think I can share it now. So, okay. Do you, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. And your five minutes is starting now. 
Okay, so small hydropower plants are actually uh, small scale projects that are based on gravitational force of falling or flowing water. So they come really in different types. Uh, there are four main types uh, of small hydropower plants. Uh, the main difference between these types is do they have a, um, a diversion of the river flow or and do they have a storage or not? So this is the main difference between them. I think in this short five minutes, the most important thing is to say what are the advantages of mini hydropower plants. First of all, they are carbon free energy source. I think this is really important first point. Also, we have to be, think about it as a really good solution for developing countries, for some rural, isolated uh, areas, uh, uh, because they're also not, they're really not expensive to build. Uh, which is, this is interesting, the next advantage is they take a little space. So usually there's no need to resettle local population. I think this is also very uh, big plus for mini hydro power plants. Uh, of course, there are benefits such as employment opportunities for local residents, uh, also development of uh, new infrastructures around the project, etc. Uh, next, next advantage I want to stress out is the one I did myself, I did not know about uh, this. Uh, I started to research for this debate and I realized that I was facing only the negative parts of mini hydro power plants, only the ones that are done uh, not in a good way. So if mini hydro power plants are done properly, they do not stop the river from flowing. I think this is the most important part, which I was confused before. So mini hydropower plants, depending on the location and type, they don't necessarily stop the river from flowing, and they actually return the water to the river in a cleaner, cleaner state. Uh, also, they're closer to consumers, so there are reduction of losses in electron network, they're pretty cheap to maintain, and last but not, not least, they're really safe, so no risks, no hazards. So I think that we, uh, there is no way of regenerating power that has no impact on the environment. This is not the question. This is why we need to choose what has less impact, uh, complied with regulation, invest in post-construction restoration plan. So do do it really responsibly, because what is I think what is the main problem, especially in Balkan countries, is that we lost trust in institutions. I mean, everybody here who is from Balkan region knows this very well. We don't have trust in institutions. But this is where we should invest our energy, not to fight against mini hydropower plants, but to fight against irresponsible way of doing them. So this is the most common sentence I see that um, uh, is a reason against mini hydropower plants. Many countries are removing them. This is totally taken out of context. Yes, many countries in the EU are removing them, but there are so many different reasons for this. Most of the reasons is because uh, those mini hydropower plants are old, expired, and this is, this is why they're removing. Also, people always repeat this question, small amount of energy gain with big environmental consequences. Well, I have to say that we don't have a luxury to throw away even this smallest contribution to, to generating electricity that does not come from fossil fuels. Because we... We needed to stop using fossil fuel fuels like a de decade ago. So this is my last slide. I just want to say that do not say no to mini hydro power plants. Say no to bypassing the local community, inadequate methodology and poor inspection services, because this is the main problem. We need to be very strict about it. And uh, then mini hydro power plants are really not a problem. Thank you. Okay, Joanna, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, stop sharing. Okay, thank Did you. I, yeah. Uh, I, now I would like to call 
the first speaker for the Contra team to that's me. give their uh, Nina. No, that's me. No, the Brilla. Brilla. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, I don't do have you... presentation. No. Okay. Do you want me to put up the presentation? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. <clears throat> I will share my screen now. Okay. Uh, so our contra or negative opening statement uh, can start now. Dobrila, you have the floor. Thank you. More than 83,000 small hydropower plants in 150 countries uh, were mapped in 2018. Hundreds of small hyd hydropower plants were built in the Western Balkan countries and two to three times more are in the preparation or the construction phase. But despite the big numbers, small hydropower plants contribute minimally to electricity production, and that is less than 2% of the total energy production, and even less in the production of green, sustainable, or renewable and energy sources. Small hydropower plants are not renewable source of energy, and the most commonly used word uh, connected with the small hydropower plants is ecocide because it explains why small hydropower plants have a negative impact. Uh, thanks to the poor legislation in the Balkan countries which favor investors' interests and even poorer regulation or implementation of those, uh, those legislation, uh, we are today presenting some of the big issues caused by the small hydropower plants. And the first one is deforestation, because they are cutting trees to build dams. And uh, I would like to thank our colleague Selma Shlievo, who shared uh, one study at the first webinar. And uh, this study uh, is, uh, um, is about um, is about the right tributary of the Neretva River, Neretvica, which is endangered by the plan to build 15 mini hydropower plants on the river. And uh, in order to do so, they have to make additional infrastructure, which includes uh, building about 25 kilometers of, of underground channels for laying cables to connect small hydropower plants, building about five kilometers of new access roads, and even um, upgrading uh, old 10 kilometers long existing local roads. So, uh, in order to be able to to uh, uh, to drive to deliver equi equipment machines and everything they need to to build a uh, small hydropower plants also drying up riverbeds is one of the effect negative effects of small river uh, small hydropower plants cut it or endangered fishes routes Overall disruption of animal migration routes and endangered biodiversity, destroying nature and terrain uh, and destroying opportunities for uh, tourism, sustainability and development. Despite the legal provisions on compliance with the so-called biological minimum, which, which colleague mentioned previously also, uh, the beds of numerous rivers uh, on which small hydropower plants are built are dry most of the year, totally dry most of the year. So, to go to the end, uh, the construction of small hydropower plants in the Balkan region uh, is not the result of strategic need for electricity or uh, production of renewable energy but the intention to satisfy investors, which are most often well-connected with the local, regional and state-level authorities and ruling party, uh, party circles. Thanks to generous uh, incentives provided by the Western cult Balkan countries, which is justified by the status of uh, small hydropower plants uh, as uh, sustainable uh, or renewable energy sources, Small hydropower plants are very lucrative business. So what else our investors and corrupt politicians are not telling us? Local communities do not generate a significant income from the concession fees because they are 
from 1 to 3 percent of the total revenue of each small hydropower plant. Electricity produced by the small hydropower plants is bought from their owners at regular or most often preferential price prices, so only investor profit from it. Western Balkan countries produce enough energy for their needs, and in most cases they produce even more than they need, and they uh, export overage. Due to the high uh, level of, of automation of small hydropower plants, a minimum number of workers are employed, maximum of one per plant. My time is up. I had more <laughs> arguments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next phase is the pro team rebuttal. So I would like to call our next speaker or speakers to join. Yes, that's me. Um, I would need to share my screen. I have okay. Then also. I will. Uh, stop sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, I will start the uh, the clock whenever you feel ready, and then you will have four minutes to tell some arguments, and then you will have additional three minutes to cross-examine the opposing team. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Tell me, can okay. you see the presentation? It's loading. Now we can see the presentation. Thank you. It's good? Okay, you can start. Okay, very good. So, um, because of building of my mini hydropower plants... How much time? Sorry, sorry, sorry. How much time does she have? Four, four minutes plus three minutes. Three minutes is for the Contra team, right? Yeah, actually, uh, you have... Okay, I will restart the clock. Uh, yes. She has four minutes to set, uh, to tell some additional arg arguments and to ask the question, which will be answered in the following three minutes by the opposing team. Okay, okay. okay. okay and I have a question now. <laughs> Can okay. any member of a team ask a question or only me? Of course, yeah. Any team, any mem team member can ask the question, of course. Okay. And okay. join Good. you in whichever point do you want, even in the cross at, at, at every moment, all of you can speak, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, we, we can, can go now again. <laughs> okay. I, I yeah. didn't understand this. <clears throat> she is talking with additional arguments, and we, as an opposite team, ask questions. Uh, no. uh, together with her statements, she will ask some questions. Your to team. Us. Yeah. Okay. And then you will have three minutes to answer them. So okay. listen carefully and prepare for your answers. Okay. And then you will have some time for your arguments and the questions which they need to answer. Okay. Okay. So the four minutes can start now. Okay. So uh, building of mini hydropower plants on Balkan rivers has raised a lot of dust concerning this uh, type of energy source. And I would like to uh, present to you some more advantages of using this source and show you why we shouldn't just give up this energy source um, so quickly. So, first of all, uh, hydropower plants are one of the oldest and most established modes of power generation, and they have efficiency of about 90%, generally talking, all types. And some data from 2018 actually show that they produced about 70% of a total global electricity supply. Um, also, we can say that they are environmentally safe choice since they uh, produce little to no waste and comparing to large scale 
uh, hydropower plants, they cause less damage uh, to the environment uh, while constructing. Um, hydropower plants are energy producing, but also energy conserving. Since if the demand for the power is low, we can minimize the water inflow or we can shut it completely uh, down so that our power plant is not producing, but also not consuming any energy. Um, as said previously, they are cheaper. Uh, uh, yeah, they are cheaper in terms of production comparing to some other sources of energy. Um, they can um, give some economical benefits through fishery, tourism attractions, or through recreational use. Um, in some places, they could be used uh, to control floods by managing the water levels of the river. And uh, also, when we talk about maintenance, most interventions are preventive and are less frequent comparing to other um, renewable uh, sources of energy. Um, next thing that is important is that since they are very, um, very old, like they are used for a very long time, we have a lot of knowledge about the impacts that they have. And also we have a lot of examples of how we can mitigate um, any damages that can be done. Um, we can divide it into four categories, impact avoidance measures, and those are the ones that are implemented into a project planning. So the quality of a project is a most important thing when we talk about hydropower plants. Second thing is choosing the appropriate location. Not every location will be suitable, and we have some very bad examples of bad projects. Uh, mitigation measures and compensations are the ones that we apply if there is some sort of a damage caused. For example, mitigations, we will try to eliminate that negative effect. Uh, for example, for fishes, you have that 30 will be seconds more. Of, yeah, of bypass channels or uh, fish friendly turbines. Compensation could be if we destroyed some type of habitat, we can try to improve it, to improve the vegetation, things like that. And the last are enhancement measures with which we will just try to improve the existing conditions and social conditions and make this project more environmentally friendly. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I will... Yeah, I would like to invite you to ask the opposing team a few questions. I would like, may I? No, yeah, no, no, not, no, 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 they, no, no, no. Uh, the pro team is asking question the contra team now. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Do you have questions for us? Yeah. Does anyone from the pro team have the questions from the for the opposing team? Shoot at us. We did not prepare any specific questions, but I have a million questions. I can ask one and Zorica and Nina can also join. Uh, my main question is, uh, why do, and I see this, I mean, what everything that Dobrila said was uh, really scientifically based and uh, et cetera, but uh, the question of this debate is not uh, building uh, mini hydropower plants just in Balkan countries. It's pro and con for mini hydropower plants. So we cannot say no to the opportunity to leave the fossil fuels alone just because we have corrupted politicians. Why do we keep uh, saying no to opportunities? opportunities why don't we invest this energy into saying no to corrupted uh, institutions? This is what we should all fight for and not hate mini hydropower plants that are done okay. in a wrong way. So this Understood. is my question. Okay. okay, and I think I partly uh, uh, answered that. Uh, Western Balkan countries, I focused on Western Balkan countries trying to find more data and we actually uh, have... Uh, try to to make data because it's about us here so um 
Western Balkan countries not only produce enough energy for, for, for our needs, and I said that because uh, we also produce more than we need and we export electricity. So uh, the thing is that everything that it's been done about small hydropower plants is not about uh, investing that money in sustainable energy, for example, but uh, into the profit for small hydropower plants owners. And uh, that is also one of the arguments uh, because uh, the, the electricity which is being bought from the small hydropower plants is paid by privileged prices. So only really only investors have the uh, have profit from it. And none of it, uh, it, it uh, does uh, come back to, uh, you know, the communities. And it doesn't even come back to local communities because, as you can see, only one to three percent of the total revenue goes to the local communities as a as a, um, a concession fee. But if I may add, please. So we are currently discussing mini hydropower plants as they are now, as the state is now, not as it was 100 years ago, and not if it will be in the future. So the fact is now, and we are we tried to prepare on fact-based uh, statements that we found on Google and various search engines. So, yes, yes, okay. I, I, I understand, but uh, you still didn't answer my question. Why do we focus to saying no to the bad examples of doing this? There is a good way to do it. And second of all, uh, Balkan country, I'm not sure for which country uh, do we have data that exports energy, but what kind of energy? Uh, from renewable sources? No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. We, no, yeah, no one, this is my no, point. The, we obliged to have, for Serbia, I know, 27% energy needs to come from renewable sources. We are not even close to that. So this sentence, a small amount, small amount. May we I need this small you? amount. It's renewable energy. I must, I must ask you something you're very passionate about. And it. one more, if I yeah. may ask, what is I, the I'm actually very energy? passionate because I changed my mind during preparation for this <laughs> ah. debate. Because I realized all the What about stories... Iron Gate? Sorry. Sorry? Yeah. What about Iron Gate? What about it? It is renewable energy. I just, I, what my point is, we, we need to renewable use... energy. It is Iron Gate. Yeah, but uh... most, we do have a, the biggest hydro plants in Europe. Yeah, but uh, big so hydro we don't need to go further than that. So Are we crashing time? I think we do uh, because yeah, we I, need to yeah. kill the fossil fuel. That's it. No more I fossil like, fuel. I would like to give the chance the opposing team to answer your last question or the statement and then to move on. Is that okay? So uh, the opposing team can now answer the question if they like, or they can go on with the, their, rebu re their rebuttal. I think we should go on because we, we okay. tried to answer it with the facts and facts didn't work. <laughs> Okay, then I would like to invite your second speaker to give us some additional information why mini hydropower plants think, are sorry, bad. I think, I think Dobrila, you did answer. Maybe Yavana didn't uh, understand it clearly, but you did say in your opening world it is not yes. renewable energy. That is the yes, answer. yes, I did. It but is not renewable energy. It is a fragile ecosystems in the hills, the small yeah. water with very low ecological uh, flow during the summer. So if you put that in the whatever, I love Yovana for being passionate I, and I will vote for you surely because uh, I love when people learn and I learned a lot of during my, my ordeal with mini hydro plants. But the fact is that Yovana did say and it is the answer. It is not renewable energy. Uh, Danube and large rivers are renewable energy. They, you can use them, but you don't put them in the pipe. 
you know, and it is a very... You, there are types that you don't put the water in the pipe. Yes, but, yes. but there, there are no such hydropower plants, small hydropower plants in the Balkans. Yeah, the Balkans. we should if fight you, for you, that. This is my again, the wrong project. Okay, but... but <laughs> so no uh, pipes and choose the so location. So we communicate, we communicate. So no we? pipes and choose the location wisely. That's my point. Yeah, no okay. pipes and choose location wisely. That's it. Yeah, there are many okay. mitigation okay. measures. It I'm sounds so too so simple. I'm sorry. Seven women I'm surrounding. Okay. What? I would like to invite <laughs> our next speaker <laughs> to give the contributal lasting I'm not four necessary minutes. Is this debate with women? <laughs> Well, you, you lose it. <laughs> I'm the... losing at start. It start, but well, we will listen to you anyway. <laughs> about, okay. about the losses which are caused by disruptions of the rivers and its surroundings, and never, it cannot be never monetized and cannot even make up for it. Uh, if we speak about uh, carbon dioxide free, uh, is that, that carbon dioxide free? Or that many hydro uh, plants, which are made from, uh, we must uh, made uh, uh, generators, we must made uh, cables, we must made uh, houses. Is that also carbon dioxide free? No chance. We must put all that uh, incoming materials to make one hydropower plant, and it is with carbon dioxide. No, no chance free. A lot of concrete. Concrete, for example. Uh, what will happen with water shortages for much more important sectors than energy, such as water supply for people, for agriculture, uh, various branches of the economy, tourism, and uh, local population? Or what, what will happen with all that people around uh, that area with what, water shortage? Uh, what will happen with uh, many farmers? maybe orga organic mini farmers, if they have a water shortage uh, to put uh, for their plants. Or what will happen with uh, <clears throat> animals in that uh, rivers, fish, other aquatic organisms, uh, which cannot use uh, these pets because they are not so mobile like crabs, snails, how many members of animal world will die when they fell on turbine propellers because they don't know to use the alternative road? Uh, hydropower plants which are built in Serbia uh, can give only 2 to 3 percent of an energy of annual base. Uh, if we speak about iron, uh, iron gate uh, on Danube, uh, iron gate with Danube, with uh, abnormal water potential, give about 20% of electricity production for Serbia. Pri private investors is able to recover these uh, investments for only five years because they have uh, a pr special price for this electricity for renew renewable sources. Um, for five years to recover money, what can expect uh, in next seven years? Because they have preferential, preferential electricity price for 12 years in total. Uh, if we speak about corrupt, corrupted politicians uh, around, uh, to, instead of uh, mini hydro plants, who made that hydro, mini hydro plants? Just that corrupted politicians and their friends, let's say. Can, can, can I have more time? You have uh, one more mi minute. Okay. Mini, mini hydropower plants cannot in any way represent weight of same renewable energy because operator, operations destroy all other types of natural resources. To m make one uh, mini hydro plants, we will destroy forests, we will destroy wallets, we will destroy agriculture fields, we will destroy uh, animal uh, life in that rivers, put the river in pipes, uh, <clears throat> change the structure of forest, because if you cut some, uh, uh, some trees, 
you will uh, change the structure of that forest because some types of birds use that trees, for example, for uh, looking for food. Uh, if we speak about eagles, they are using uh, must high uh, pine trees uh, for looking for uh, for looking for uh, food. What okay. will happen with eagles? I I'm sorry, but your time has up, and now you can ask the questions for the pro team. Please be concise and clear. Uh, I have two questions for the start. Okay. Uh, first one is: uh, Can you um, can you say which energy sources, which renewable energy sources, are cheaper energy uh, uh, production plants? Uh, are cheaper than uh, small hydropower plants uh, in data, please. And the other one is uh, uh, one of your argument uh, was uh, that uh, building small hydropower plants is uh, brings jobs to the local communities. Um, our uh, our research showed that only one person is need, uh, needed maximum one person is needed per uh, small hydropower plants and i guess you think that people are employed while they build uh, while they build the site so uh, which jobs and how many jobs thank you okay pro team you can have the floor uh, can I answer it shortly? Yes. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, about the eradication of extreme poverty and hunger. I uh, think that was your second question, right? Yes. About the, yeah. Uh, the energy inputs such as electricity and fuels are essential to generate jobs and industrial activities, transportation, commerce, micro-enterprises. Uh, for example, uh, almost all staple foods must be cooked, requiring heat and fuels to be compatible with compatible with uh, human nutrition. Uh, we are talking about um, uh, how, to, how should I say? Particularly in uh, rural or developing areas, small-scale hydropower can represent a locally available, reliable source of energy where no other energy uh, generation is feasible. <laughs> and uh, also about the, this is uh, actually a contrastatement to your second uh, part. Uh, we have uh, a possibility to link a hydropower to other uses, such as irrigation in agriculture. This can reduce the investment costs for individual users, thus expanding the possibilities for income generation and development. Uh, we uh, we access to electricity actually can have many positive development impacts, which can be regarded for each of the Millennium Development Goals. And the goals are eradication, extreme poverty, and hunger, achieve universal primary primary education, promote gender equality, empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combat with some other diseases, ensure environmental sustainability. These are facts what I'm talking about. Uh, because energy production, uh, distribution, and consumption has many adverse environmental, uh, environmental effects at the local, regional, and global levels, including indoor air pollution in slum communities, okay. land degradation, global warming, etc. Okay, I would like to grant the contra team with one more question because the pro team also had two questions. Please be short because we already have exceeded our three minutes. Uh, I think I didn't receive an answer for, for my first question. Uh, which energy is cheaper? Yes. yes. Which, which yes. one is which cheaper? One is cheaper? Uh, renewable, renewable, renewable energy renewable source. Energy. Uh, in our part, we were using it to compare it to the fossil fuel uh, energy sources, okay. not to others renewable sources. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so now we are approached our final phase. So I would like to ask the member of the pro team to open their to open their to start their closing statement. Yeah, 
to start with their closing statement. You have three minutes. Please respect the time. My God, <laughs> time zone. I had also a presentation, but I will only talk, not share the screen. Uh, why we are supporting uh, mini hydropower plants? We are talking about uh, hydropower as a method of generating electricity that uses uh, moving water, kinetic energy to produce electricity. And mini hydropower has been used as a common way of generating electricity in isolated regions um, since the end of the 19th century. In contrast with uh, large-scale hydropower systems, small ones uh, can be installed with little or negligible environmental impact on wildlife or ecosystems. And uh, due to its versatility, low investment costs as, as, uh, and as a renewable energy source, mini hydropower is a promising option for producing sustainable, inexpensive energy in rural or developing areas. We have a lot of benefits, uh, I think. Uh, the, the benefits of hydropower have been recognized and harnessed for thousands of years. In addition to being a clean and cost-effective form of energy, hydropower plants can provide power to the grid immediately, serving as a flexible and reliable form of backup power during major electricity outages or disruptions. Um, also produces a number of benefits outside of electricity generation, such as flood control, irrigation support, water supply. Oh my God. Uh, I must mention that uh, maintenance costs are uh, relatively small in comparison to other technologies. It's a long lasting and robust technology and uh, life of systems can be as long as 50 years or more without major new investments. Mini hydropower may, may be um, cost-effective solutions due to the low cost of distribution and minimal effects on the environment. And um, we should always take into account the official acts and documents of the states, of the governments. We have energy community of the European Union in front of us and behind us. Everything that is not prohibited by the constitution or by the laws is allowed. We should also uh, not compromise ourselves with ignorance due to mass media propaganda and uh, despite the fact that they are paid to spread negative and false feedback, still cannot be measured and compared with the facts from the scientific works and achievements of uh, properly educated professionals from the appropriate field, in this case, hydropower scientists and environmental professionals. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. Now I would like to invite the final contra speaker to give their oh, closing me. statement. So from our side, we remain at our standpoint and we will not change our attitude that as long as the problem, both pros and cons of the mini hydropower plants are considered a standalone, uh, we will never be uh, in favor of these facilities. Uh, during this discussion, nobody mentioned what is the average time of construction of mini hydropower plants and what is their impact in these phases uh, as opposed to their lifetime. So according to the studies, the average time of uh, construction of one plant is two years. And this is when the major impact happens. So there is a full study done in 2011 for Turkey. They did a study on 40 uh, mini hydropower plants and they were measuring impact. And more hydropower plants are on one river, the impact is higher. Now our question is how much does it cost in money? Then let's also remember EU for a water framework. Uh, one of the first lines says that water is not meant to be commercially used and we are all the time mentioning the profit. Um, going back to the construction of mini hydropower plants, uh, we learned that Switzerland has 1000 mini hydropower plants. Now, when we multiply this, these 1,000 with two years of preparations, can we imagine how many cubic meters of waste is disposed during those two years for 1,000 mini hydropower plants? How many uh, species are lost? 
how many uh, lands deteriorated and can be converted into the money or we don't have to. So as long as there is no aligned frameworks that takes into account impacts through all the stages of hydropower plants to the nature, uh, to from the start to the construction, from the process of planning. Because we were all the time mentioning hydropower plants are in use, but what happens in the construction phase is when the most damage comes. And finally, going back to Kaplan's survey about Amazon dams from 2017, he states that citizens of countries with dam building booms should also be involved in asking difficult questions, such as how much biodiversity loss, fisheries, productivity decline and human rights violations are we willing to trade for these projects? Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was our final statement. Now we will have some time to discuss the debate or maybe professor would like to add something in the end. I will give the floor to the professor now. Thank you very much. Okay, I will be very short. I mean, I mean, we spend a lot of time, and I just uh, learned the surgeon uh, had a horrible day. Sorry, surgeon, for all of us. Anyway, uh, I am um, really amazed how how well done you did this uh, uh, debate, and. Uh, I don't know your profession, your background, but you all sound like ecologists, so uh, an environmentalist. So it is, it is, it is a great, great surprise. And I, I must say, uh, according to my own experience, and I will send you some links. You will see my my debate on TV with Montenegro and everywhere. I'm, I am against, totally against, absolutely, fanatically against mini hydro plants at the Balkans in a way they do it at the moment. And I think they, they stop it now. Uh, but, uh, and I'm against uh, removal of, of uh, Europe. Of, it is not only because they are old, it is because they want to restore the uh, river life. They they realize that it is not, it is not just because they, they are old. They remove it because they know they they did it wrong. So we don't need to do that, <clears throat> even in a worse way than. Anyway, I vote for Team uh, Pro because uh, if I were, uh, I don't know, I I am impressed, first of all, they were brave enough to, to take the, the challenge. Obviously, in, in Serbia and Montenegro and Bosnia, everybody is against mini hydro plants, including academic scientists, uh, local po population. It is a mainstream now. And it is much easier. There are the, the, the arguments are, are on our side against mini hydro plants. I must say that all the arguments are on our side. And uh, I uh, applaud to team against but i will vote for the team pro just because we always need to check to get the balance not to go to the mainstream because if we follow the mainstream and don't have the, the what is the name zorica and the brilla uh, uh no not zorica but the girl who said that she learned a lot preparing for the, this debate. It is amazing how a lot of things it is hidden because uh, everybody is against, against, against biodiversity. Uh, forest, it is not about forest. I mean, the, for mini hydro plants, the forest is not a problem. We need to cut a few trees, but that's not a problem. The main problem is corrupted uh, system. The main problem is barbaric uh, uh, attitude towards local community. And the main problem is the type of mini hydro plants and the number. You know, you can't have 800 mini hydro plants in Serbia on 800 rivers. So if, and investors, they are not investors, they're so-called investors. 
they invest our money. So uh, if we, just to finish this, if all 800 mini hydro plants in Serbia is done, it would make one hour of electricity for Serbia in the winter time. So we will destroy all the rivers we have for one hour of electricity. We can live without that hour. It is not worth it. You know, the risk is bigger than the benefit. For uh, Iron Gate, the benefit is bigger. It is still impact on Danube uh, fish community, but the benefit is much bigger. Sustainable development is the measure, the benefit, and the risk is the benefit is the is but bigger go for that but don't always go to the mainstream stand for your belief even if you stand alone so that's why to have always opposition to have always someone who who, who keep you i will vote for team bro it doesn't okay. mean the team, the team against wasn't good enough maybe even better but it is about the attitude to always check the data and don't believe always to the mainstream before you check data. All the okay, data. so uh, whether we should uh, vote now in the chat or we will do it in some in other way? In assignments. In the assignments, okay. Uh, I would like to ask, add my comment uh, in the first part of the debate. I was like, I was for the pro team, but in the end, the contra team, in my opinion, had better arguments and strongly closed the debate. Yes, because they have more argu the arguments. Yes, of course. Arguments yeah. are on their side. I had but, more to say, but I didn't have time. Now, now Maya and I will debate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we don't need to vote now. You can, you no. will vote in your evaluation form, and, will, and then, we will, uh, yeah, we will publish the results uh, when we will we'll, set up the the results <laughs> for proteins. <teams>. Sorry, <Yeah. laughs> sorry. So we will have, if you want, but I don't want to take you more times. So I think I, I we, we, no. Yeah, I I think it was great uh, uh, that we had the chance to debate and to, to to me it was the opportunity to learn to debate at all. So yes, and I think we we, re no. we almost reach. That's why I vote pro pro because the team against didn't want to move a little further just to to, to find that connection with team pro and say, okay, let's talk about different types. Forget about all this, what we've done here. Let's talk about, so that is communication. So all this exercise was to communicate. You did it well. Yes. We were very close to, to find, even in, in half hour, to find the main point which we, you will agree and say, we don't want this type. We don't want these politicians. We don't want this uh, old system, but we can have on some places selected places modern small and community usable for the country to use the electricity not to go to the electricity system from the side in belgrade we don't need that but for them like in germany or switzerland to to community to use that electricity for themselves so just the, if we had maybe 10 minutes more we might meet at that point and that is communication i'm very happy we were and we are so close to that. And you were you were great. You were absolutely great. I didn't expect that, really. Okay, so, I would like uh, just to uh, uh, Sonia ask the question in the chat. Can I explain or can we explain uh, the assignment? Uh, so a few days ago, I put up the notification in the forum where you have the word document. Uh, afterwards, then put it on the webinar for info page so you can find the word document and in the word document you have the evaluation form for the pro team and for the contra team you will taxatively taxatively have uh, the aspects of the debate which you should grade but also you will have narrative part of the evaluation that narrative part of evaluation is the most important part because it will 
get you the points for your assignment. You know that you can have maximally 25 points. So by the quality of your narrative uh, explanation, you will get the grades, uh, I mean the points. So in the end, you will of course vote for the pro or for the contra team, but your voting wouldn't have effect on your grades. Only your narrative explanation about how good the debate was or how good the statements arguments. and the arguments were. So uh, your personal opinion in the end about who was better will not affect your grade, but only objectively stated comments about good and the bad side of the argument that the both team presented. Uh, it is individual assignment. For this week, you only have individual assignments. You don't have a team assignment. So uh, each of you should uh, upload its own assignment signed. You will have everything in the form. Of course, if you have any question uh, regarding the assignment, you can write on the forum or you can write directly to me or professor so uh, it will be additionally explained. You also have that quiz online about mini hydro plants and uh, we will have that learning game about Rio Tinto case and how, why and how we could or should or not deal with that in this country. It is another topic and we will do that in another learning game. So thank you so much and have a nice night, the rest of it. And uh, I'm looking forward to see your assignment. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for participating in this webinar. See you next week in the next course. And before that, we will have the results of the debate put up on the forum. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ciao. Ciao.